Savathun has made her appearance this season, but she's actually been around much longer than you expected, spying on the city in secret and building her master plan. This hive god is the most fleshed out antagonist we've seen to date from Bungie, and the new expansion will hopefully answer some of our long awaited questions, like how the hive now use our light. Today though, we are going to discuss everything you need to know about Savathun. So whether you are a new player just fresh out of the Cosmodrome or a veteran godslayer, here's some information you won't want to miss. This story begins on the world of Fundament, a gas giant planet home to creatures like the Protohive, a species of krill-like beings who were ruled by the Osmium King. The Osmium King had three children, Arash, the oldest, Sithona, the middle child, Zero, the youngest. With word of an apocalyptic event on the horizon, the three siblings took a ship down into the depths of their planet, hoping to find an answer for their dying civilization. It was here where they found the Worm Gods, beings of immense power, darkness, and corruption. The siblings each took a worm and ingested it. If they kept killing, this worm would be fed. If not, they would continue to struggle, and this was the ways of the sword logic. They were also told to keep their nature, that Zero must test strength and become a night morph, Zivu Arath. Sathona must be cunning, she took the mother morph and became Savathun. And Arash always must try to understand the universe. She took the king morph, transforming into a male hive and becoming Arix. The siblings returned to the surface and shared this worm with their species, becoming what we know as the hive. This is where things stray off a little bit. Oryx would speak to the deep and learn the power to take. This is when he changed his name from Oryx to Oryx, the Taken King. Zivu Arath and Sabathun also had armies of their own. And while the siblings caused campaigns of destruction throughout the universe and annihilated tons of alien species, they also fought each other trying to outwit one another and showcase how powerful they were. This was something that Hive Gods did. After years of this cycle of fighting and trying to kill each other and actually succeeding in a couple of different attempts, Oryx gifted Savathun a Vex Axis Mind Hydra called Quiria Blade Transform. Quiria was created by the Vex to simulate and obtain Oryx's throne world but he took the entity, leaving it partially alive and able to control its own will. Now this will come into play later, so remember Quiria. After this exchange of the gift, it is here where Savathun begins to question this whole thing with the worm. Is the sword logic even worth it? She said, This thing we believe, that we're liberating the universe by devouring it, that we're cutting out the rot, that we're on course to join the final shape. I haven't found a strict, eternal proof. We might yet be wrong. At this time, the three siblings went their separate ways. Zivu departed with her army as did Oryx, and Savathun flew her hive war moons into a black hole. Now you might think that was a bad idea at first, but this was actually a strategy, or more like an experiment. Savathun believed that since time would pass differently around this black hole that she wouldn't need to feed her worm as much, but she turned out to be wrong. So this brought up an idea for Savathun and popped up a little light bulb inside her head. Instead of killing to feed her worm and keep it satisfied for the sword logic, let's just try to trick people instead and feed off of that. Savathun is very cunning and uses trickery everywhere, so surely that must work. With this tribute, I shall undertake a mighty work, a real humdinger of a scheme. I'm going to refinance my entire existence. I'm going to move from an existential economy based on the accumulation of violence to an existential economy based on the accumulation of secrets and tribute of failing to understand me. I shall name this tribute of failing to understand Imbaru, for it shall be as formless as the mist. 
Now up until this point, all of this knowledge of Savathun really came from the Books of Sorrow and some background lore cards found from the game. But starting in Destiny 2, she started to make more appearances and this began on the Moon of Titan. A new hive brood began to pop up which was linked to the Ancient Queen. The Savathun Song Strike mission in particular was a ritual, the hive attempting to reach her by converting guardians into crystals of void light, attempting to summon the Witch Queen. Another scary sign was that Savathun had apparently learned the power to take through that gift Oryx gave her, Quiria. Evidence for this was found on multiple planets including Earth and the European Dead Zone where a Red Legion commander was taken. And obviously the Red War happened after Oryx's death so someone else took this commander. This summoning of Savathun would continue for a couple of years. In the Warmind expansion we heard this. I got a fragment of the message. Savathun, emerge from the deep. Take our power. Forsaken and the Dreaming City is where things get crazy. The Witch Queen would find herself in the Awoken Dreaming City, where she found something super powerful in Riven, the last Ahamkara or Wish Dragon that Oryx partially took before his death. Savathun would take control of the Taken around the area using Quiria and also grant one last wish with Riven. When the Guardians were sent in and Riven was destroyed, a Taken curse was unleashed upon the city, starting a three week cycle that would continue endlessly. I should have known that Riven would grant one last wish, one last curse. Now the Dreaming City has been taken. I opened the gates. I ordered the attack. I should have known. With this corruption and Riven, Savathun was able to do a lot. Aldrin Sov's corruption was likely her, the Scorn as well, and she also deployed her daughter Dolinkaru to Mara's Taken Throne World. The goal here was to keep this curse going week after week and find a way into the Awoken pocket dimension or homeworld called the Distributary. Now remember how Savathun wanted to go into that black hole to alter time and not have to feed her worm as much? This is sort of the same thing happening here. Time would pass way faster in the Awoken Distributary so if Savathun could gain access she would be able to obtain immense amounts of power in a short amount of time relative to our solar system. So Marasov would call upon us to enter the Shattered Throne dungeon and kill Savathun's daughter but this was also a part of the plan. Quiria would begin that time loop simulating it over and over again. So if the Guardians wanted to end this, they would have to keep fighting in Dreaming City until the curse is broken or until Savathun wins. Emperor Kallus would one day send one of his shadows to one of Savathun's war moons to pillage for loot. They came back with this thing, a hive crown of sorrow, which was believed to contain some of Oryx's power to control beings. In reality though, this was another trap by Savathun, and whoever wore this crown would be under her control. So Kallus kind of figured this out and he put the crown on Galron. He thought maybe he can control parts of the hive, but this caused chaos aboard his Leviathan, and we had to go in there in the Crown of Sorrow raid. Shadowkeep is another scheme in and of itself. Essentially, Savathun contacted the Daughters of Crota and said, hey, I'll reanimate Zalmak and reform the Death Singer Choir if you build a Scarlet Keep. The daughters thought, hey, this sounds like a pretty good deal, so they built that keep and then when the Guardians invaded they realized they made a mistake. The Witch Queen's plan here was to cause a giant distraction, attract the Guardians here to exterminate what remained of Oryx's bloodline. It's actually pretty smart if you think about it. In Season of the Arrivals, those pesky pyramid ships would finally arrive in Seoul. As we made our way to the Tree of Silver Wings to try and speak with the darkness, Savathun would intervene, not wanting the Guardians to interact and learn the secrets of this dark power. 
To do this, she released tons of Taken on Io and also commanded Nocris, a hive necromancer, to stall the Guardian progression. If you remember back, there were also Eyes of Savathun placed around other worlds so she could spy on us even further. They could be destroyed with a weapon gifted by the darkness, the ruinous effigy, but it's pretty scary. After the defeat of Nocris, many of Savathun's brood would look to her as a traitor, having made plans against the wishes of the darkness. So Savathun went into hiding. Good riddance. Savathun's haze has diminished considerably, though not completely. She's still out there, hiding. Then I hope she saw what became of her brood. With Savathun now hiding away for a bit even from her own forces, her sister Zivu Arath would emerge in the season of The Hunt, attempting to gain more power than her sister and corrupt soul with these hive cryptoliths. The High Celebrant was also dispatched to hunt down the Witch Queen as she was trying to turn away from the darkness. If you remember back though, Savathun still made secret plans and missions while in hiding, like the Harbinger mission. In the European Dead Zone, Taken forces were trying to siphon light from a shard of the Traveler. It was also during this season that Aldrin Sov, who Savathun corrupted and Forsaken, was brought back as the Crow. Causal energy readings are... My sensors are overloading. The Taken are trying to stop us from communing with the Traveler. Energy readings have normalized. The Hawk, it's gone. I'm not picking up anything either. Savathun. Hawk Moon is whole again. Reborn. She can't take that from us. Season of the Chosen had Savathun emerge into a new form. She would morph herself into the form of Osiris and brought Crow to the city. In this new body, she would sit back and watch and also conduct plans of her own. In the season of the Splicer, an endless night vex simulation was cast over our city. At first, it was thought to be just the vex, but this was actually caused by Savathun, using Quoria Blade Transform to simulate this endless dark. I have found the vex at the source of the endless night. Quoria, the dreaming mind, its code has been corrupted by taken magic. Savathun, we've been played. Quoria has been commanding the other Vex, poisoning their minds, directing them at Savathun's will. The Endless Night is of Savathun's design. Blade Transform, the Dreaming Mind. This is it. Find with everything you have. At this point, she was still disguised as Osiris inside of our city, taking in all of this deception to feed her worm, which still hungers. So, over various seasons, Savathun was in our city causing havoc. Think about the events like Zavala's assassination attempt. Crow revealing who he truly was in Aldrin Sov and Lakshmi's death when she opened that Vex portal in the city. Season of the Lost would open with our Guardian hunting down Osiris for his part in Lakshmi's plan. Once we finally found Osiris in the Dreaming City, this reveal took place and Mara froze Savathun in a crystal form. Be careful. I'll hold, hold you to it. it. The Witch Queen, sister of shapes, deepest in the Hive, Coven, etc., etc. My sister Zivor Rath hunts me on behalf of another. I wish only to be free, and Mara Sav has graciously agreed to help. And Osiris? Sweet that you should care, little bird. I have been Osiris for as long as you have known him. But rest assured, I will return him safely to you, in exchange for your assistance. 
So yeah, Savathun was Osiris this whole time for those couple of seasons. The real Osiris was said to be elsewhere, and the Witch Queen told us that if we rid her of her worm, she would give the real one back. So Savathun went from originally killing to feed her worm, to feed off deception and in Baru, to now wanting to remove her worm entirely. In Season of the Law, Savathun messes things up even further, telling Crow about his past as killer Aldrin Sov and speaking to us about the events that took place, saying that she is no villain. I am your friend. I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. Don't worry, I was not offended. Instead, I found a form more pleasing to your eyes. Osiris was lost, lightless. I saved him from Zivu Arath and assumed his shape so I could guide your victory against her. I ferried the reborn prince to your city so he could be redeemed. I protected Zavala from Kaido's ambitions, ending a war before it could even begin. I delivered the House of Light on its knees to Ikora. I unmasked the enemies lurking inside your city's walls and destroyed them. You may disagree with my methods, but you can't argue with results. I am no villain, and you are no hero. We are paracausal. So the goal was to get rid of Savathun's worm, yes, and then to kill her when she was vulnerable. But as we can see in the final mission, this doesn't go to plan. Zivu Rath's forces invade the Dreaming City as we try to complete this ritual. In the end, the Tekians do free Savathun from her worm, but at that exact moment, Savathun releases her own spell, which makes her switch places with Osiris. This will lead us right up to the events of Witch Queen. Plans are fickle things. Two can view the same events and predict entirely different outcomes. I was outmaneuvered, and Savathun slipped through my fingers. What happened? Savathun happened. The Tekians believe she enacted a contingency spell the moment the crystal shattered. She transposed herself with another subject marked with a matching hive rune. Osiris. Is he alive? He is. Very weak, but alive. The Techians have confirmed his identity. It's Osiris. No tricks. Do you have any idea where Savathun is now? We... do not. She could be anywhere. Osiris lives. Thank you, friend. Savathun tried to bury him, to use him like currency for bargaining. She wore his face and spoke with his voice, but they were not his words. Savathun has many enemies, but she has never faced Saint Fourteen. We will find her, and this time, it is her who will be buried. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. A complete recap on the entire story summary of Savathun, the Witch Queen. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, my name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.